Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be taking a look through my collection of compact books, particularly compact SF paperbacks. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look. Okay, so we'll start off with my compact SF novels. Now, basically, compact my compact collection, at least, for the science fiction, which I'm trying to get it all of, consists of the novels, anthologies, New World's SF Digest, and the Science Fantasy Digest. So we'll look at them all individually. We'll start off with the novels. Um, so they're three and six, uh, the basic novel. The thicker ones are slightly more expensive. Um, Michael Moorcock, who was... Uh, very closely involved with Compact, it seems, and uh, obviously he was editor of New Worlds for quite a long time. He also edited some issues of SF Reprise, which we'll have a look at in a minute. So yeah, this was uh, F266. I'm not 100% sure on the numbering, but I don't believe it like started at F1. They sort of started about 250, something like that. Here's Prodigal Son, Philip E. High. Now, the other big editor at uh, Compact for the science fiction was Cyril Bonfiglioli. Now, I don't know a lot about him. Um, I've heard my friend Steve, the Outlaw Books, uh, talk a bit about him and say what a difficult... Everyone says he was a difficult person to deal with. And um, cover art, we'll check this as we go along. So this is by Jay Cawthorne. Someone else who was apparently very difficult to deal with was Keith Roberts. And uh, he did some of the cover art to the, uh, the digest, which we'll see in a while. Another one by Moorcock. So... He was very, very um, closely tied with Compact, so I guess he got his own books published quite easily. Um, this is the first anthology, but it's part of the main run. So this is H287 in the numbered series. And uh, this is uh, got some great names there. Let's go to the title page here. Edited by Moorcock. There we are. So you can see what was in inside that one with an introduction by him as well. And... Um, Spine-wise, you know, they're quite colourful. Predominantly black is the colour for Compact SF. And as you can see, you've got that number in there on the bottom there. So the numbers that are missing, of the uh, the actual novels, I'm missing 10 in this little run. So to have them also, they did not publish a lot. Um, this one seems to come up quite a bit. Some of them you see, you know, for like between five to eight pounds for really tip-top condition. Um, the actual printing uh, page quality of these is a really nice one. The page quality of these is not that great. They remind me of um, sort of later four square books and early New English Library. So, that, so they're not tip top and they tend to yellow quite a bit. So bear that in mind. I mean, I'd certainly uh, try to find them in as nice a condition as I possibly can, but that's not always possible. Um, thankfully, with a few exceptions, they're not mega money, these at all. Uh, the most you ever see any of them really is about... 30 35 pound and, and that's for a couple of the, the rarer digests and uh i'll point those out in a moment um number 302 then time transfer arthur sellings deep fix a cool one it's a drug related one you've got to think of when these books were being published as well 1966 anything 66 67 is going to have um sort of the background of sort of the underground culture and i guess these uh these authors were all sort of that sort of age weren't they um but as i said trying to find them in really nice condition is is harder i have quite a nice one here plant called krishna sprang to camp 311 313 another moorcock twilight man now Here's an example. This is one of those like light sleaze ones, which nothing to do with science fiction. This is their main run. So um, Compact published other things like Hank Jackson, for example, lots of those sort of Hank Jackson novels, light sleaze such as Hilary Brown, even like the odd crime title uh, by authors such as Arthur Kent. So uh, it wasn't just science fiction, but certainly towards the end, it seems like they had pumped out an awful lot of science fiction. It seemed to be their main sort of thing. El Sprang de Camp again here, the floating continent. I think that's our first Keith Roberts cover that we've spotted today. And we will see plenty more and also some stories by him. There he is on the back. Um, Sprang de Camp with his uh, hat on. 
but you can see my copies on the whole are quite nice so i'm being quite strict with the ones um that i'm missing you know so judith merrill shadow of the hearth this is a later one and we've got a photograph cover there the burnt doll and my last fiction one is thomas m dish pretty cool this one 102 h bombs which uh, i believe steve recommended there he is there so what i've got is pretty nice i'm missing 10 novels for the set so there's not that many for you to track down if you want them um, a lot of them are available online i'm just sort of enjoying the fun of of trying to find them when i'm out and about but i think come the end a couple of them are going to be uh, ones that i'm going to need to perhaps buy online okay so that's all the books i think we'll next do one of the uh, digest and i think we'll do science fantasy so science fantasy was edited by cyril bonfiglioli so uh as i said i don't really know a lot about him I, I couldn't find much online either um except that you know we hear that he was very very tricky to deal with so uh make of that what you will um roger hearns did the uh one for this so science fantasy used to be a traditional british science fiction digest and um when it started being published by compact um it came out in paperback form so uh you got like one or two or sometimes more um stories inside great way to read them i actually prefer reading digest stuff like this so there is the contents there so it's just like a traditional digest isn't it but uh done in paperback form what's this the postal paperback book club has opened a special department for science fiction readers look at that so i wonder who they were published by Hmm, maybe they're just the normal publishers, just a, a, a science fiction, yeah, science fiction book club. Pretty cool. Anyway, that one there then is, um, this is science fantasy. And this number is number 65 in the main series. Oh yeah, there we are. So volume 22, number 65. And uh, they actually go up to uh, number 81. And that's all the ones in the, the paperback um, format here. So R. Harris. They've all got this distinctive black spine, like a lot of the uh, compact books have. And Harry Harrison there, and a Keith Roberts story. The Charm by Keith Roberts there, 14 pager. So it's a lot of the authors from this period I'm, I'm actually really enjoying at the moment people like harry harrison i'm enjoying reading keith roberts i'm enjoying um i've still got loads of more cop to to read and i don't really know i need a sort of a more cop primer really perhaps that's something that um steve could produce uh, a way to sort of dip your toe in and give him a go really um, but these are some great great authors here this is number 70 these are numbered on the spine now so you can clearly see um their place this is the full run in uh, in the paperback format and um on the science fantasies front none of these are too expensive from what i can see it's a keith roberts cover you know three to five pounds you can get them cheaper than that if you buy them in a job lot it's another one Here's the first part of The Furies, the great one by Keith Roberts, which I really enjoyed. Good stuff with his own with his own cover there. It's one of my favourites, that one, Science Fantasy. Desolators, Eric C. Williams. But that was the main story, but then there is other ones in there as well. So one of them has just given the, uh, the treatment. The Furies Part 2 is in there. Keith Roberts cover again. Coming of Age Day. Weir Woods. Thomas Burnett Swan. The Day of the Doomed King. A Brian Aldous there. With the Keith Roberts cover. A monthly collection for the connoisseur of science fiction. Edited by Cyril. If that's how you pronounce it, it's Cyril. Bonfiglioli, what a name, what a name. <laughs> Play from Space, uh, good one by Harry Harrison there. You know, the first like 50 odd pages in that one. Godbirds of Glen Talak, John Rackham. And the last one in number 81 in Science Fantasy 
And then it's got, you see, Science Fantasy underneath Impulse, Ballad from a Bottle. So it's almost like it's leading into Impulse. There's another Keith Roberts cover there. So I think we should look at the uh, Impulse next. So Impulse was just a 12 book series and they are numbered on the spine. I think they are quite tough to find in actual fact in really tip top condition, um, but good all the same. Yeah, look, Impulse Succeeds Science Fantasy, a new monthly collection for the connoisseur. There we are. And it's Cyril Bonfiglioli again with specially commissioned stories, which is really cool. Yeah, Roberts and Vinter. Don't know much about them, in all honesty, um, this publisher. Let's see, it's got uh, an Aldis, Poole Anderson, J.G. Ballard, James Blish, Harry Harrison. Good stuff there. Keith Roberts, Jeff Vance. What an issue, really, isn't it, you know? Um, so that's book one. Book two, this is part of uh, Pervain, Lady Anne. I've uh, read that one recently, uh, Pervain. What a book. Blimey O'Reilly. Fantastic uh, turn of phrase. Uh, really, really incredible. Keith Roberts jacket again here. Seventh Moon. It's number three. Number four, Mac Reynolds. Hatchet Man. Very nice. Number five here. Coffee Gate. Another great one there, Keith Keith Roberts. Beautiful. Very nice condition copy as well on that one. Number six, Make Room, Make Room. Another very famous one. Would later get published by Penguin, not that long after this, but there you go. Number nine. Sorry, number seven rather. Um The Rig, Chris Boyce, a Keith Roberts jacket. Number eight, Frederick Poole, Day Million. In fact, all of these seem to be Keith Roberts jackets, don't they? Ice Schooner, Moorcock, another one there. Very, very nice. As you can see, the paper is a little bit pulpy. It just is, it's not the best sort of condition. Um, but there's a little list of uh, the best of new science fiction is in compact, there we are. Big uh, list of it all there. Number 10, and Thomas M. Dish meets Kingsley Amos. And the editor-in-chief for this one, Harry Harrison. So it looks as if uh, Harry Harrison's taken over at this point. Glue coming away there from the spine. Number 11. There we are, Harry Harrison again. Really nice, we've got the original insert in there. And then the final one in Impulse was this one. Number 12, Aldous and Hebron. Wilson. Yeah, I wonder if it's said anything. But, um, there's a little editorial by Keith Roberts in this one. Mr. Harrison is presently unavailable, having made tracks for Philadelphia. So Keith Roberts has stepped in to, uh, to do the introduction. But you can see the type is not that clear. And the, the paper is super thin. It's just, they're not the greatest made books, which is why trying to find them in really tip top condition, I think is a bit of a challenge. And you might find these around because, you know, they're definitely sold, but um, maybe tough to find in, in nice nick. So now we've got the uh, short lived SF reprise, which was only six issues. I'm missing number one, but I've got numbers two to six. So uh, these are quite a bit thicker. They've got the H prefix which seems to denote five shillings um, on these and uh, this is a collection of first-rate science fiction originally published in new worlds magazine well we'll see new worlds in a minute the uh, run of that here we are edited by moorcock again as you can see the quality of the books it's really really not that great so finding these in tip shop tip top shape is going to be tr tricky it is as simple as that but that's what was in that first one there Two. Book three is even bigger. So this was seven and six. This one. Big, big, thick book. I think this is probably the thickest compact that they published. That's what was in it. So some good stuff here. Here's 
reprise number four. This is uh, stuff that came out in science fantasy. This one collected by Cyril Bonfiglioli. There we are. Book five. Another big thick one. Look at this. Not a bad copy. It's been read, but try finding these in nice nick. They're just not around. But when they turn up, they're only about five, six pound each. So they're not a fortune. Um, but they're just, you know, you need to be patient to find them. Uh, as I said, I'm still looking for a nice copy of number one. But I know that they're out there. It's just... Uh, Trying to find a good one. There's uh, that one, part five. And then the final one in SF Reprise was this, book six. You can recognise some of the Keith Roberts mini uh, mini covers there, shrunk down. Once again, a collected from Science Fantasy by Bonfiglioli. Getting the hang of saying his name now. <laughs> it's a very, very nice. There we are. So that was SF Reprise. And now we've just got the rather fantastic one of New Worlds to look at. Okay, so we start off with New Worlds number 143. Now, I actually need number 142. Um, and sadly, I've not got it. So I need two issues of these New Worlds in this paperback format to complete my set. Um, and I have, you know, wondered what, you know, why are they scarce? And um, number 142 features two J.G. Ballard stories and um, I'm also missing number 156 and that is also sought after because it's got the second uh, ever story by Terry Pratchett in it so and that's why that one's quite collectible um, but yeah 142 is the first one in sort of paperback size and I just one hasn't come my way yet but um, it's a similar format to science fantasy but this is edited by Michael Moorcock and uh, yeah this is uh, 1964 July was 64 and uh, yeah, it's got some good stuff in here. So we'll go through these. This is uh, 144. Shores of Death. Morcock gets the uh, front page there. The cover, rather. Shores of Death concluding. 145. 146. Power of Y. 147. Forty-eight, Arthur C. Clarke, J.G. Ballard, Michael Walcott, Barrington Bailey. Some good names there, you know, some good names. Life by Buyer, E.C. Tubb, 149. And the 150th, there we are. Once again, good names there, celebrating the 150th issue. One fifty one Ship a Disaster Charles Platt Lone Zone <laughs> Another great one Harry Harrison's first novel at Bill the Galactic Hero. Not sure if that's complete or if it's in parts. Yeah, it's in parts. So the first 55 pages again. So we've seen that before. Aldous there, Girl and Robot with Flowers. A great title. <laughs> 155, Harry Harrison's E equals MC squared or bust. I said 156 I've not got. It's got that early Terry Pratchett story in. Making it quite collectible. 157. Transient Langdon Jones. And the second stack. Move them over there. We've got 158 and Roger Zelazny. Love is an imaginary number. The two timer. David Muscle. One sixty, John Brunner's the evil that men do. One sixty one, JG Ballard, look at that. The assassination weapon. So front cover.
plus the main, well, I say the main story, it's, there's only seven pages of it, so, uh, sorry, nine pages in there, but got the front, uh, the front jacket anyway, maybe they eat it out, pilot plant to Bob Shaw there, 163, God Killers, John Baxter, stuff in here. 164, In Passage of the Sun, George Cullen. 165, there's Keith Roberts there, Brian Aldis, Amen and Out. 166, great cover that, Michael Moorcock, Behold the Man, that's a great Keith Roberts one there. 167, Charles Platt, Garbage World, and Roberts again. At JG Ballard, look at this Stormbird, Storm Dreamer, 168. Keith Roberts jacket, Ballard headliner. Very, very nice. Thomas Dish, John Clute, Sladic. That's a good one, isn't it? But that's probably a little bit more collectible, that one. Um, Thomas Dish now, Echo Around His Bones, another great one, 169. A very funky cover as well like a bit like a james bond isn't it a james bond film intro I'm just trying to see the date on this one this one's actually not dated from what i can see number 170 jg mad again look, day of forever very very nice and these are the ones to get aren't they They're superb 171 and the last one in oh, paperback format was this one which was 172 this was the final one Judith Merrill Daughters of Time there we are Good stuff. So there you go. That's my collection of compact paperbacks. And I think they're a really nice slice of a particularly interesting time in uh, British science fiction history. So I need just 10 novels, one odd anthology and two odd copies of New Worlds to complete everything under the SF umbrella. So that is definitely one of my collecting goals for 2024. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed looking through my collection of compact books today. I certainly enjoyed getting them all out. It's the first time I've really sort of had them all together. And uh, I've got to say, they do look fantastic. And I'm really pleased on the whole with the condition of these. They're much, much better than some of my other collections. Um, so good stuff. Um, if you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it that thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.